You think you know Bill Murray? Well, here's some things you may not have known about Bill fucking Murray. I know that's not your middle name. I've been watching you since I was like, since I could masturbate. I mean, not that they're connected. You know, former Queen Super about to become a master champion. <laughs> Bill Murray doesn't have an agent or a manager. He simply has a 1-800 number attached to a voicemail box that he checks rather infrequently. Because of this, he's missed out on a few roles over the years that seem like they would have been a great fit for him, such as Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Little Miss Sunshine, Monsters, Inc., and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. In line with choosing to be technologically disconnected, Murray dislikes being followed by throngs of people and, as such, chooses not to surround himself with an entourage. This is partly due to a fear that cropped up when he was first assigned a bodyguard. Quote, the first time I was ever given a bodyguard, I thought, oh my god, I'm going to be assassinated. It made me think I was going to be shot. I never liked the sensation of it. When Murray was still a teenager, he worked as a caddy at a golf course in Illinois. He saved the $4 he'd get for every golf bag he would carry and used it to pay for his tuition for Jesuit High School. He had the nickname, quote, New Murray on the golf course as his brothers had worked as caddies before him. Murray assisted Danny Rubin, the co-screenwriter of Groundhog Day, in improving the script over a handful of weeks. After spending several days in a New York City office, they road tripped out to Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, where the film is set. They spent their time saturating the script with the feel of the town. When Murray agreed to star in Wes Anderson's Rushmore, he was making approximately $9 million per film. However, he only took $9,000 to feature in Anderson's film. Additionally, when the studio denied Anderson the necessary funds to rent a helicopter for a scene, it was Murray who wrote the check for $25,000 to make it happen. Wes Anderson never cashed that check, and still has it to this day. On Bill Murray's 20th birthday, he was arrested at O'Hare Airport by police for attempting to smuggle and subsequently sell 10 pounds of marijuana. He was only discovered because he cracked a joke to the person sitting next to him on the flight that he was smuggling weed. Eventually, Murray admits that he would like to write a play as it's something that he has yet to do. This makes sense given that he got his start doing theater in Chicago and New York, most notably for the National Lampoon Show, prior to his work on SNL. Murray feels a connection to theater, stating, quote, It resonates with me. It's where I started, and I think it's all theater in a funny way. Sofia Coppola had to track down Murray to offer him the role of Bob Harris in Lost in Translation. She left innumerable voicemails for him, but heard nothing back. She went as far as to recruit the assistance of Wes Anderson to help garner Murray's interest. Murray did not commit to the film immediately, instead waiting until the last second to accept. And even then, it took him a week to make it to set once filming had begun. Murray is the first to admit that he mistakenly signed on as the voice for Garfield the Cat in the 2004 animated Garfield film because he thought that Joel Cohen of the Cohen Brothers, known for their outstanding work on Fargo and the Big Lebowski, was involved. Unfortunately, he was mistaken, and instead of Joel Cohen of the Coen Brothers, the director of the film was instead Joel Cohen, known for his work on such films as Evan Almighty and Cheaper by the Dozen. However, Murray didn't offer up this explanation immediately, as it took him six years to admit his mistake. And here's a bonus one. Before Tim Burton was given the film to direct, and long before Michael Keaton was offered the titular role, the role of Batman was offered to Bill Murray. The film was to be directed by Ivan Reitman due to their collaborative success on Ghostbusters. Interestingly enough, the studio executives helming the project also wanted David Bowie as the Joker. However, the original script saw massive rewrites that weren't done for six years. By the time the rewrites were done, Burton had been given the reins and was pushing hard for Keaton, despite the studio still holding out for Murray, who had probably moved on and forgotten about the whole project entirely. I've worked with better, but not many. Thank you. That's it for this episode of You Think You Know Movies. Make sure to subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and get the latest movie and TV news on ScreenCrush.com.